Welcome to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Thank you so much for joining us again. Going to have a conversation with Dr. Juan Camilo Arjona. He's joining us here from MyoVet Sciences to talk about uterine fibroids and the recent FDA approval of MyFembry. Welcome to Health Professional Radio, Dr. Arjona. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's really a pleasure to be here and join the conversation with you. Well, uh, I'd like to um, find out a little bit about um, about who you are, what it is that you do, uh, your area of expertise, and your role at MyoVent. Thank you. Yeah, of course. I, I'm a gynecologist by training. Mm-hmm. I've been uh, uh, I have the experience of treating women with uh, uterine fibers and any other women's health conditions in the past, and and for the last 20 years, I've been dedicated to developing new medications for multiple. Uh, uh, indication, mul- multiple conditions, uh, but very passionate about women's health throughout my career and very excited to be here at Myovat, leading the development of, uh, of new medicines for women's health conditions, including uterine fibroids. Uterine fibroids, um, what exactly causes them um, and why are they uh, such a problem? Yeah, it, uterine fibroids are the non growths that uh, appear in the womb of women. Uh, derived from the muscular layer of the womb, and in they by themselves are benign. They they are they they are not a problem. But being there, they cause multiple symptoms, um, starting with very heavy menstrual bleeding that can be extremely due to the quality of life of women, um, as well as pain and other symptoms that are equally disruptive. So um, this is a very common condition. It can be. Um, observed in 70 to 80 percent of women by the time they reach menopause or around age 50 uh, is way more common in women of African descent and is also way more severe in, in them. So um, it, it is very prevalent and, and very disruptive of the life of, of many, many women. Now, I mentioned that there's been a recent uh, FDA approval of MyFembry uh, for the treatment of heavy menstrual bleeding, as you said, one of the uh, associated symptoms of uterine fibroids. It was just approved. What are the product's key features? How does it differ from what's already available for this condition? Yeah, we are, uh, as you can imagine, we're very excited about this approval. Um, until now, there's, there's, there has not been a lot of options for the medical treatment of uterine fibroids. The, the main treatment has been um, surgeries, either myomectomies or the removal of the fibroids or hysterectomies where the whole uterus or the whole womb is removed. And, and many women do not want or uh, are not ready for such a, a large procedure. So um, what what we develop and it's been approved is a, is a product that reduces heavy menstrual bleeding pretty substantially. Um, and it's also uh, generally well tolerated and it allows for the medical treatment of this uh, uh, of the heavy menstrual bleeding uh, associated with this uterine fibroids. It, it allows uh, uh, women to have multiple options for the treatment, which is something that they they, they, were, they were seeking to, and gynecologists to also be able to provide more options to their patient. Now, it's also being studied for endometriosis. Could you explain to our listeners what that is and why uh, you've chosen to pursue that as well? Yeah, equally as uterine fibroids is another very common disease that affects women of reproductive age. In, in this case, the, the lining of the inside of the uterus or the endometrium uh, is seated outside of the uterus and provi- uh, causing inflammation and pretty significant pain, but also uh, pain with intercourse, infertility, and other symptoms that are very disruptive. And as uh, I mentioned earlier, we are very passionate about women's health and about uh, providing options for women uh, with these conditions and, and options that have not been available before for this very common diseases. So uh, we're excited that we can, with a, with a single product, uh, hopefully address more than one condition that and, and help uh, many, many women. Is heavy bleeding exclusive to these types of diseases? Uh, what I'm asking is, can it be misdiagnosed? Should a woman, if she's experiencing heavy bleeding, should she seek help or does pain uh, have to be involved as well before it's something that should be that she should seek treatment for? I think that's a very important question uh, uh, because until now or in general, uh, there's been a lot of misinformation about what is normal versus abnormal uh, mm-hmm. or heavy bleeding. Mm-hmm. And the, the most recent definition 
is that any any bleeding that is disruptive to the life of a woman should be considered heavy. Okay. And therefore, I I do encourage women that have heavy bleeding to, and they consider that it's it's more than that 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 what they would consider normal, and it's bothering them. But they talk to their physician because uh, uh, there are there are options for them, and they should get um, uh, assessed and determine if they have uterine fibroids. Or if there are other reasons, as you pointed out uh, to your question, there are other possible reasons, and, and um, there are different treatment options for each of them. So it's very important that uh, that uh, women that are concerned about the, the frequency, the duration, or the volume of their bleeding, that they talk to their physician. Is there, a, I guess, a, a, a critical mass uh, as far as how many fibroids are present before they cause infertility or any of these other problems? Is is there an, an incident or, or a circumstance where you see a uterine a uterine fibroid, but it's you're not going to address it because it's not accompanied by many others? I think the number and the size of the fibroid are not necessarily indicative of the of the symptoms mm-hmm. or the consequences of mm-hmm. fibroids. Okay. I think that this is, is likely more driven by the, the symptoms and then you do a study and then you find the fibroids and then you can attribute that symptom to the fibroids and then you have to treat it. Okay. But there are many women that have fibroids. As I said, they're very common, but not every woman has symptoms. And, and mm-hmm. in those cases, usually you just um, take a watch and wait approach. Is the treatment you say it's very very common? Is there um is there an awareness campaign or is there a lack of awareness about this condition? There is unfortunately uh, unfortunately a lack of awareness, and that's something that we uh, uh, feel very strongly about. And we work with other with advocacy uh, um, organizations as well as, as on our own to to raise awareness about menstrual health in general. And then um, the symptoms that we've been discussing all along, heavy menstrual bleeding, painful periods, et cetera, because um, these symptoms have been normalized by, for multiple reasons, by family members, by even some physicians that are not fully aware of these conditions or how to treat them, that uh, basically dismiss women that come talking about these symptoms. So uh, we, are, we are working very hard um, with the community to advance the conversation and make sure that that um, not only women are talking about their symptoms and and, and um, reaching to their physicians, but that their physicians, their family members, and everyone is aware that that uh, what is normal and what is not, and then uh, when um, treatment may be an option for for this condition. So so awareness is probably uh, the key um, to advance uh, the management of these conditions. Once um, a person is made aware or a physician is made aware, some diseases, especially uh, reproductive diseases, have, have a bit of stigma attached to them. Yes, you're exactly right. And, I, I, and that goes to the point I was making before about normalizing the symptoms. Uh, th- there is a, a pretty broad uh, established um, taboo and stigma about anything related to uh, um, menstrual health. Uh, just talking about menstrual period is some, uh, something that is uh, um, frowned upon in certain, by certain people or, or by society in general. And therefore, uh, women feel that they can't talk about it, uh, normal or abnormal. And then it's even less uh, if it is abnormal. It can be embarrassing. It can be considered uh, not clean. And, and it's many times, as I mentioned before, dismissed by their own uh, uh, mothers or their family members that said, yeah, I've had it. We don't talk about it. Um, it runs in the family. You're going to have to live with it. And therefore, they are dismissed early on and, and they have to, to suffer in silence. And that's what we're trying to change is remove the stigma about mental health and about having menstrual bleeding and about uterine fibers so that we can uh, um, help improve the life of all these women. Well, I appreciate you joining us here this afternoon, Doctor. Give us a website where we can learn more about uh, Myovent and about MyFembry and uterine fibroids as well. Uh, yes, I think that, that for uh, Myovent, you can go to www.myovent.com. 
for my Fembry, uh, for for physicians you, uh, that want to know more, they can go to www.myfembryhcp.com. And there are multiple resources uh, and, um, and the web for uh, uh, uterine fibroids. I, I personally think the Fibroid Foundation is, uh, um, has a lot of resources that can um, help patients and, and understand better uh, uterine fibroids and, and, and talk more about it with other, other patients. Thank you so much, doctor, for joining us here on Health Professional Radio. It's been a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you for having me. It's been my pleasure. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Audio copies of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, listen in, download at SoundCloud, and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Health Professional Radio. 